high school, I struggled a lot with motivation and energy. I would say around 70% of the time, I was tired, stressed, procrastinating, miserable, and just apathetic towards life and school in general. I would sometimes have random bursts of productivity where I would get the majority of my work done within several days or a week or two, and then I would inevitably crash and be my normal, miserable, procrastinating, done with everything self. So today I'll be telling you how I got out of my procrastination or black hole slumps in the short term, and also how I've stopped them from happening in the long term since I haven't really had any real slumps in the past year and a half. So when it comes to getting out of a slump in the short term, the first step for me was to realize that productivity and motivation ultimately is and comes from energy. At least in my experience, when I'm sick or I'm really sleep deprived, I'm definitely not thinking about the goals that I need to accomplish or how many things I'm going to get done. And so the less energy I had, the more unmotivated, apathetic, and generally lazy I felt, and the harder it was to do anything. So to get to get more energy, I needed to remove the dementors from my life, aka the energy drainers. And so the first main energy drainer was my chaotic sleep schedule and ironically enough, caffeine. So exactly around a year and a half ago, I completely quit regular coffee and tea and switched entirely to decaf and it honestly changed my life. I had been drinking around three to five cups of coffee a day and tea on top of that at night since I constantly felt tired and it would give me a temporary boost of energy that would last one or two hours so I could frantically get my work done last minute at 2 a.m. What I didn't realize was that caffeine was was gradually ruining my sleep schedule and the quality of my sleep. And so this went on throughout my entire high school career. So it was no wonder that I was constantly stressed cranky and procrastinating because I basically didn't sleep normally for four years and I was constantly almost pulling all-nighters and then sleeping in until 2 p.m. on the weekends, which made me feel even worse. So I highly, highly, highly recommend switching to decaf and just seeing if that helps. Keep in mind also that you'll probably have some withdrawal symptoms like headaches and sleeping a lot more the first week, which is completely normal and actually a good sign because it means your body is adjusting. And then after that, it will take anywhere between a couple weeks to a month for your body to normalize. And at least in my experience, it became a lot easier for me to fall asleep. And I naturally started falling asleep earlier and just felt a lot calmer overall after I quit caffeine. So the second dementor or energy drainer is what I like to call inactive rest. If you think about it, life is movement, and the slump is essentially like a black hole or quicksand. The more days I spent doing nothing and just watching Netflix in my free time, the more and more tired I felt. And with each passing day, it became harder and harder to have the energy to do anything. And that's because our body's energy levels work kind of like the supply-demand chart in economics. The amount of energy your body gives you depends on the demands that you place on it. That's how professional athletes have seemingly so much energy to exercise for hours and hours on end, but for them, it's just normal. So when you're not really doing anything, your body just decides, eh, I don't really need to give you any energy, and so it just doesn't give it to you. At least that's how it works in my experience. And the good news is that there is a pretty easy way to hack this, and that is to constantly move and be active. So the more energy you expend, the more energy you'll start to have with each passing day. And I find that the best way to start the energy 
energy flow is to exercise. So the more you move each day, the more energy your body will start to give you. And on top of that, little things like making your bed or dressing up require energy, and that will help you not completely fall back into your slump again. So it's just as long as you keep moving and doing things and demanding energy from yourself, eventually it will start to come and you'll feel more and more energetic and motivated to do things. The final dementor or energy drainer is procrastination itself. I've noticed a funny thing about procrastination that the more you procrastinate, the more guilt you feel and the more you want to avoid what makes you feel guilty. And so our brain starts to also play tricks on us by imagining just how bad the work we have to do is and we start trying to escape from reality since we feel so overwhelmed. And so then the more we watch things to escape from reality, the worse our fears and guilt gets and then the more miserable, upset, and just overall annoyed and negative we feel about ourselves and life in general. And so the solution to this is pretty simple, again in my experience, but it's just hard to actually do. And so the first thing I like to do is make a to-do list of everything I can possibly think of that's stressing me out. Wait, did someone say to-do list? What a fascinating notion. Hi, it's me, the productivity fairy. I just happened to be passing by and I just wanted to talk a little bit about a productivity software called Notion. So what exactly does Notion do, you say? Well, Notion is free for students and combines all the tools you need for school. Note storage, digital note taking, task lists, and more. As you can see here, you can take digital notes by making outlines, numbered points, and even toggled questions that you can use to quiz yourself. Notion is super easy and simple to use, and they even have numerous templates available if you don't want to manually make the pages yourself. To learn more about Notion, go to this link here and try it out for free today. All right, that's all I have for today's message. You can continue. Goodbye. Um, okay, so as I was saying, the first thing I like to do is make a to-do list of everything I can possibly think of that's stressing me out. And so not what my ideal self would do or the perfect schedule or plan, just a really simple list of the most urgent tasks that I have to get done. And so then I prioritize them in order of the worst task at the top, the one that I dread the most, and the easiest one at the bottom. And then I start from the top, since I used to also procrastinate by doing all the small menial things and avoiding the big ones. And you'll see that with each task you complete, your mood will be improving, your energy is going to go up, and you're just gonna overall feel more motivated and happy because you're no longer feeling as stressed out about everything that you have to do. everywhere here. <laughs> Birthday boy, come on! We're going to eat all the food without you. Come! So pretty.